Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the biggest retrogression of this year. It's the retrogression of Mars, which I will read out the dates now for you. It's happening in the sign of Aries. And it will go back to Mean Rashi, the sign of Pisces. So let me read out the dates before beginning. So today, 15th August, Mars is in Mean Rashi, Pisces. And tomorrow, 16th August, at 7.21 p.m. Uh, time, India, uh, it will enter Aries. And it will then be retrograde on September 10th. So that means from 16th August to September 10th, it will remain in the sign of Aries. And then it uh, starts getting retrograde from September 10th, okay? And then when it starts getting retrograde, on October 4th, it will uh, again enter Pisces, all right? So therefore, 16th August to October 4th, which is almost one and a half months, it will remain in Aries and then on 4th October, it reaches and it keeps going retrograde, retrograde, retrograde. And the retrogression will stop on 14th November. 14th November, Mars is stationary and it gets direct, progressive on Saturday, November 14th, 1.34 a.m. So total duration is September 10th to November 14th, which is 66 days. All right, from... Aries, it goes back to Pisces and then it enters Aries again on 24th December, okay, uh, when it goes direct uh, on November 14th and then after 40 days, which is December 24th, it enters Aries again, okay, and then it will stay in Aries till 22nd February next year. All right. So basically, this is from 16th August, September, November, uh, September, October, November, December, January, February. Six freaking months. Six months, one week almost. All right. So this is a very long transit of Mars. And uh, this happens once every two years. And it stays in one sign for almost six months. Okay. But now, because the degrees are in initial degrees of Aries, so it will reach Pisces back. Okay, Just like Jupiter this year had reached back Sagittarius uh, again. Okay, um, uh, It had crossed uh, to Capricorn and then it came back to Sagittarius. Okay, All right, so this is a very important transit. Why? Because Mars is getting back to its own sign. See, you have to understand what is Aries. Aries is the sign of creation, actually. Why? Because, see, you have to understand certain things, actually. Uh, who is getting created, actually? See, the soul who is there uh, in the spiritual realm, the soul is very pure, actually. Okay? Uh, the soul has no contamination. The soul is represented by Jupiter. That is why he is known as Jivakara. Now, this same soul, uh, when comes to this material world, the soul identifies with some things of this material world. That identification is the sun, actually. And how do you identify? You've got to have something, right, in this world. So, Jupiter is Sattva Guna, Sun is Rajoguna, Sattva Guna is pure, Rajoguna is filled with desire, then Tamogun is filled uh, with Tamas. Okay. Tamas means anything which gets destroyed very soon, in no time. So Mars represents the body. Every, anything physical in this world is represented by Mars, actually. So Mars represents the body. So Jupiter, which is the pure soul, gets a desire to rule something in this world. And then the ruling is done through this body, which is the first house, Aries. Okay. So whenever Mars or any planet, for that say, transits Aries, this same thing happens. There's a desire for creation because the pure soul, uh, which is the Atma, is known as Chit. Okay. 
C H I T, chit. <laughs> not C H E A T, not cheat, chit. Okay. So therefore, the the Atma is known as Sat Chit Ananda. Okay, Sat Chit Ananda, full of knowledge, eternity, and bliss. Okay. So, therefore, and when the sun comes into existence, it becomes Chitta, Chit Chitta. Chitta is something which is impure, which gets contaminated by desire actually. Okay. When, the, when chit becomes chitta, the mind comes actually. Which means the mind which we have currently, which uh, tells us you should have this, you should have that. All right, That is the mind, which is chitta. Okay. That is why they say, na chitta ko shuddha karo, in Hindi they say. <laughs> they say, chit ko shuddha karo, but actually it's not chit. It's chitta, okay? Because uh, chit is only when there is uh, no material desire, only spiritual desire. Then only you can say chit should ho gaya mera. But if it is material, then you have to say chitta should ho gaya mera, okay? So this is what is Mars. So when any planet, this is what is the sign of Aries. And this is why the sun, which shows desire, actually gets exalted in Aries because the moment the sun gets a body, the the body, uh, the sun identifies everything. Okay, so like I have this body, so this is my dress, this is my eye, these are my eyes, this is my nose, this this is my cheeks, this is my head, these are my hairs. Then I have this, you know, uh, this mobile. Then I have this laptop. Then I have this fan which is running behind. I have this room. I have everything. Okay, whatever I have, I think this is mine. So. Unless there is Mars, unless there is physical creation, which is the sign of Aries, there cannot be identification. So that means when any planet enters Aries, that sense of creation and identification comes along with it. You get a desire to do something which you wanted to do from long time back, but you could not do. Now is the time that you desire to do something. Okay. But now the question is, what will you end up doing? Is it, what? It can be anything, right? So that will depend on your horoscope and your dashas especially. What will you desire? What? Because the dashas will give you the state of mind. Okay. The, the translation of the word dasha from Sanskrit to English means situation. Dasha means, uh, where are you heading to? What are you doing in life? What is your goal? Sometimes people say that, oh, I do not have any goal in life. No, you have a goal. But the thing is, your goal is scattered. You are thinking to do 10 different things, but it's not the goal which you lack. It's focus that you lack. Okay. And in fact, Dasha also shows focus. So if you are headless uh, during a Dasha, that means... Uh, your focus is not clear, but it's never that you don't have focus. You know, even a person who is lazy and sitting in uh, and watching TV, doing nothing and wasting their life, they are also having focus, but they are focusing on TV actually, right? So uh, it's not that people don't have focus. It's just that we do not focus on the right things that make us a better person, all right? So this is what we got to focus, things which make us a better human being. Because if you do not focus on them, we will automatically focus on things which bring us down, which pull us down. So from today, never say, I lack focus in life. Even if you don't know anything, you still have focus. But the question is, is that focus helping you in life? All right. So this is what a planet transiting into Aries will do. But there is something which you can find out from your side. That is uh, the houses which Mars rules in your chart. So... Mars rules two houses. One is uh, two signs actually and two houses. One is Scorpio and the other one is Aries. Now Scorpio is the own sign. Aries is also own sign. But Aries is a higher octave of Scorpio which is why it is known as Mool Tricon sign. Mars is much more capable in Aries than he is in Scorpio. And of course, he gets exalted in Capricorn, no doubt about it, and gets stabilitated in Cancer. Okay. So now, uh, the thing is, um, you got to understand certain things. So, for example, from 
uh, now the thing is mars himself lords aries and he himself is coming there okay so if you have major planets in aries then this transit is going to be very transformatory for you okay and now this is not only a transit um, so suppose your mars is your 10th lord and uh, suppose you are a cancer lagna so aries is your 10th house so 10th lord is coming into 10th house back and it's coming to aries okay that means something related to career you will start again now if your mahadasha is of venus and venus is in fifth it can be something related to creativity if venus is in third it could be youtube if it is saturn it could be something related to steel oil coal petroleum something like this so nobody can tell what cancer ascendants will go through because the dasha will decide all right so therefore uh, and also scorpio okay so wherever scorpio is falling that will also have a very significant importance but aries the lordship of aries will be more prominent okay so um, so in this case of a cancer ascendant mars is the fifth lord and the 10th lord but because mars is primarily the 10th lord because the mool trikon rashi is in the 10th house so the activities of the 10th house will be more important than the activities of the 5th house okay but both will have significance always remember that do not think that one won't have significance okay never think like this now the thing is uh, what is this retrogression retrogression means that uh, you do something again or something very prominent some very prominent desire from the past is coming back at you okay so suppose um, you are a capricorn ascendant and uh, mars is your fourth lord okay for example fourth and 11th lord so then some friend could come back or something to do with education can can happen education is more prominent because aries is in the fourth house don't remember for capricorn okay and it could be property it could be vehicles if venus is linked if your dasha is of venus okay and it comes back to revati nakshatra which is in pisces all right do not forget that so uh, around this uh, mid of september let me read out the dates again the retrogression is exactly from 10th september to 14th november all right so two months of retrogression so these two months are very 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 damn crucial actually okay because during these two months uh, you will actually see that you had a desire to create something but then you are not pretty sure pisces shows confusion or letting go of certain things so during those 66 days you will feel that there is a need for changing something or finalizing something retrogression also shows completion okay finalizing something it's like final completion <laughs> it's uh it's like contradictory because final and complete means the same thing but sometimes you finalize your completion something which is waiting from long 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 time is now going to be completed by february when is it uh, when is it entering vrishab rashi taurus 22nd february 2021 so in these 6 months the houses ruled by mars or aries will hold the most prominent say in your life okay and if the current dashas which you are running are also related to aries so for example if aries is in your uh, third house and you are running the dasha of jupiter who is placed in the third house bang on these 6 months are the most crucial months for you this mars transit will hold the say to everything that happens in your life okay so when the retrogression happens back to uh, pisces you will get this feeling that uh, there is something which i desired which i thought i will create which i thought i will make which i thought i will discover and you are running towards it but then you realize that uh maybe this is exactly this is not exactly what i need at this moment so you will go back and try to see if there is still something which you can work to sort things out okay or there is something which you uh, still need to get done before making the final move So again, uh, what happens? What is that move? And 
which area will it affect you for that you have to check your horoscope and everything else all right and as usual if you are new to the channel then uh, please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me please go down to my website and if you want to check other videos on mars leave it here all right god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him